what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to avoid global elimination. As you know global elimination gives you all kinds of bounces in your scene and everything gets brighter and uh, increases your render times and then you try to cry a little bit because from going, going from one minute the frame you're going to like two and a half and so on. Uh, so instead of doing that let me just show you how you can avoid global elimination at all costs. You know sometimes for things like interior obviously you need global elimination, you need a lot of bounces, uh, but if you're setting up a basic scene, uh, don't rely on global elimination and uh, HDRI images to light up your scenes. Uh, just use lights and uh, different tricks to uh, cast lights on a certain object and uh, cancel out different rays. Anyway, let's begin. So we're going to obviously start with a plane and put the segments to one and one, just like this. Make this poppy editable. Uh, click on the edge here, extrude up, drag it to the side a little bit, change the uh, coordinates to world, drag it up one more time, and this is gonna this is gonna be our uh, basic uh, backdrop. And now uh, let's select the side edges here. Go to the right view or the side view, and let's just extrude up, just like this. Or actually, let's select the other edge as well. Should have done it the first time. And then go to the side view and extrude it just like this. And now go to your point view, so select your uh, selection tool here and make sure only select the visible elements is checked off. Select the points here, drag them down so it's nice and straight, nothing's sticking out. Yeah, this is good. Uh, go back to perspective view, and as you guessed it, we're gonna drop this inside the subdivision surface. I'm sure you've seen this a billion times. And uh, this is how you get your basic uh, backdrop. There's all kinds of shapes you can do. Uh, you can create them from cubes, you can create them from spheres, cylinders, and so on. Just you have to delete uh, delete few uh, faces. Uh, anyway, let's go back to the object mode. Uh, drop few spheres in there so we have something in the scene. So we have this little sphere here. Something like this. Uh, let's drag another one, make this one a little bit smaller. Make sure they're not touching. Let's drag this down and back. And let's do one more in the back here. It's gonna be a huge sphere. Maybe something like this. I'll drag it back so they're not touching. Drag it up a little bit, and now uh, let's check the top, the top view here so nothing's touching. Let me drag this back, maybe something like this. Yeah, the top view looks good. The side view, yeah, that looks pretty good as well. Uh, so, this is our uh, basic setup. We can actually move this one back as well and closer. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, so, this is our basic setup for the uh, objects in the scene. Uh, now let's, uh, I, I made these basic materials, it's kind of like a diffuse, uh, which is kind of like a closer to red, and then I have Beckman uh, for the uh, reflectance, and I uh, increase the roughness, really simple stuff. Let me drop this on the background. And for the uh, spheres, I made this shiny light blue material, which will work for us here. And uh, so this is the basic setup, and now let's... Uh, uh, bring in some lights in here. So let's drag in area light. And what we're going to do is actually go to tags, cinema 4D tags, and drop the target tag on here. And let's just select one of the spheres here and make it a target object. And this is for uh, the light to follow the spheres. As you can see, uh, if you move it, it's going to follow the sphere. Really nice. Uh, so let's start with the main light, and let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's put this to the side a little bit, maybe like this. That's pretty good. And uh, we have to activate the shadows. So let's do area. For the detail, let's do fall off inverse square, and move this maybe something like this. And let's just do um, and create a camera here. Drop the camera, 
jump inside the camera here. Select portrait so it zooms in for us, gives us this nice uh, effect. And I think I have to bring these spheres a little bit more up because they're inside the floor. Yeah, something like this will work. And uh, I switched my uh, render to physical. Let me just uncheck ambient occlusion. I was playing around with that. And uh, let's get a first render going and uh, see what that looks like first. All right, guys, so the render just finished. As you can see, we're getting a nice lighting going. Obviously, we have to uh, fill up the left side here. And uh, so let's just do that next real quick. So let's jump out of the camera. Let's duplicate uh, the same light and move this to the other side of our, of our spheres. Maybe something like this. Let's actually make this bigger. Uh, tone down the um, fall off here. And let's change the colors to make this more exciting. Uh, so for the first light, we'll do same thing, light blue. Uh, for the second light, let's do like a yellowish color. And we gotta tone down the intensity quite a bit. Let's do maybe 50%. And yeah, that looks pretty good. And maybe let's move this closer. And uh, let's do our quick second render to compare. All right guys, so the uh, the third render just finished, so let's compare. So we have this, or oh, this is the second render I mean, and now uh, we have this result. Uh, so this was our main light, and uh, this is our second light set to 50%. And we can actually tone it down, uh, tone this down even more to maybe 35 uh, to get a nice gradient. But this is too light so far, and uh, we're up to one minute seven seconds. Uh, but don't get scared by these numbers. I'm working on a laptop, so you know you're never supposed to do this on the laptop. Anyway, uh, let's go to the uh, second light here. Tone this down to maybe 40%. Get, let me get out of the camera here and bring back uh, the fall off. And let's copy uh, the light one more time. And uh, this is going to be our third light. Let's move this light uh, probably overhead or something like this. It's going to be more like from above. And let me just move this maybe like this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And let's change the color to maybe green. And let's actually increase the intensity for this one uh, to about 75. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So this is going to be our overhead light. And let's just play around with the fall up here. Yeah, maybe something like this will work. Uh, so let's do our uh, third render and uh, see what that looks like. Alright guys, so uh, th the third render just finished with the third light, so let's compare. So we have 46 seconds on the first, then we filled up the left side, uh, 1 minute 7 seconds, so then we have our third, uh, third render, we have 1 minute 26 seconds. And as you can see, we're getting nice results, and this is where you'd be like, oh, let me turn on the global illumination, ambient occlusion, and everything else. Uh, so let's just do that and compare how, how much longer it's going to take. Uh, so let's go render settings, turn on global illumination and ambient occlusion. Uh, let's, let's go to the general tab. Uh, so for the primary, we're going to do um, IS or IC. And then uh, for the secondary, we're going to do light, a light map. And uh, for the light mapping, I did path count to 6,000. And uh, that's about it. And for the ambient occlusion, I, instead of being uh, this black color, I just changed it to medium gray and I increased the uh, ray length to 150 and uh, I increased the contrast to 1% as well. Uh, so let's uh, give another render with these settings and uh, see how much longer it's going to take. Alright guys, so the uh, render uh, with the global illumination and the inclusion just finished. So let's compare. Compare the two here. And as you can see, it barely did anything. And uh, what does it tell you? Well, if, uh, if your light is set up correctly, you should be getting a really nice and clean result. And if it's not set up correctly, uh, global illumination, all it's going to do is increase uh, the overall render times. So we went from 1 minute 26 seconds to um, 2 minutes 11 seconds. And I know that can we can get more bounces if you play around with these settings 
and maybe uh, we do uh, QMC for the primary and do uh, IC for the secondary, Incre increase the diffuse depth and so on, play around with gamma and uh, play around other settings and increase render times even more to get a brighter result. But instead of doing that, uh, another option would be uh, let's keep global, I mean ambient occlusion. Uh, let's jump out uh, the scene here. And uh, what you can actually do if uh, you look back at your renders, uh, let me just open Picture Viewer and go to the last render here. So if you look at your render, you're like, oh, well, I don't like uh, the shadows here. It's way too dark and so on. Uh, so what you can do is actually add some uh, bounce cards into your scene. So let me just uh, put the segments to one and one. And for the size, let's do 50-50. Or maybe let's do 100 to make it a little bit bigger. And now let's, let's just move these to a nice location so it bounces more light onto our spheres. Maybe something like this. Yeah, something like this should work. Maybe one one bounce card uh, can work, or maybe two. You can put them, you know, just like this on top of your spheres and uh, make sure, you know, more light is getting bounced on, uh, back onto the spheres. And uh, what you have to do for the bounce cards is add uh, the compositing tag and make sure it's not seen by camera. It's not casting any shadows, not receiving shadows. And uh, you can turn off reflections as well and ambient occlusion. Uh, so it's only getting the rays and it's bouncing back onto the spheres. And if you don't want to deal with the bounce cards, you can obviously add more lights. Uh, so how would you add more lights? For example, let's take this um, point light. And our left side was a little bit dark. So what we're going to do is uh, move this to the side. Make sure it's not affecting our camera too much. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's add the same fall off and we're square. Turn this way back, maybe something like this. And uh, for the project tab, let's uh, we can include or exclude all these objects, uh, but I think it should be fine. For the shadows, we're not gonna add shadows. We don't need any more shadows uh, that way. And for the intensity, let's do about 25. And maybe actually let's increase this and move this up even more. And if you don't want to see this in your uh, backdrop or your spheres, you can uh, use the project tab and include exclude the objects. Uh, but let's give it another render and see if this uh, light helped a little bit. All right guys, so the render just finished. And as you can see, uh, we filled up those shadows even more and uh, we're getting a nice and clean result. Uh, but if you zoom in, we get this little reflection uh, dot from the point light. It's an easy fix. All you have to do is turn it off in the setting. And as you can see in the corner here, I kind of moved it too close so it's in a camera. Uh, but we only added, I think, let's see, four. We only added eight, eight seconds instead of uh, like global illumination. We have uh, 211. Uh, that's a lot. And what you can do for the point light, and you can add even more lights to fill up the shadows, the, you know, in the areas that you needed to fill up. And uh, if you go to your general tab, scroll down, you have your diffuse and specular. You don't want to affect specular, so you would just turn that off. And now the little dot in the render view, uh, you're not going to see. All right, guys, so let's uh, recap from the first render to the last render and uh, from the main light to the third light. So as you can see, this was our main light. Uh, the next render was uh, our second light, yellow, that I added to the side to fill up the shadows here. And uh, this is our overhead light. Uh, this is uh, the pass with global illumination. As you can see, nothing changed. And uh, this is uh, when I added one more light to the side to fill up those shadows. Uh, but to summarize, what I was trying to show you in this video is uh, try to avoid global illumination at all costs. Uh, try to add lights instead of uh, bumping up your settings inside global illumination to make things brighter. And don't forget post-production. Uh, you can always uh, bump up the contrast in there. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully this video helped you in any way. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, and uh, I will see you in my next video, guys. Uh,